Welcome viewers, you're watching my YouTube channel Biofa and I'm your facilitator Dr. Seema Sharma. Dear viewers, this video is about the introductory part of chapter 9 reproduction in animals and this is from biology part of class 8 science textbook. My Biofa videos are watched by students who are preparing this chapter from NCRT as well as books of other publications. So I have gone through the content of all these books and the content is more or less similar. So in this video, I'm going to cover page number 100 as per the flow of information given in NCRT book, but it is supplemented by taking certain visual clues, flow charts and clips for extended learning. Viewers, videos on chapter number one, Two and eight are also available on my YouTube channel Biohub. For making a sound foundation of biology part, I suggest you to go through those also. Chapter number nine, reproduction in animals. It is basically divisible into three parts. Segment number nine point one. It is dealing with the mode of reproduction. In nine point two, you will come to know about sexual reproduction. And the focus of this part is totally on sexual reproduction in human beings. Last segment of this chapter is segment number 9.3. And in this, you will come to know about asexual reproduction in animals. This is the journal layout of this chapter. So before proceeding, let's have a look on the learning objectives of this video. In this video, you're going to learn about the definition of first, reproduction, second, modes of reproduction, third, terms related to reproduction, and fourth, sexual reproduction. So I suggest you to stay tuned and watch this introductory part of chapter nine till the end. Are you ready viewers? Okay. Let's go for a quick flashback to connect with this topic, reproduction in animals. And for this, I'm using certain questions. My first question is, can you name any four organ systems of human body? Yes, digestive system, circulatory system, excretory system, and reproductive system. Okay, these are important organ systems of human body. Now, out of these four, which organ system is not very important for the organism to stay alive. You must be thinking all are required. No children. Yes, think. Correct. Reproductive system is not important to stay alive. You must be thinking why. Children, suppose we are not breathing. If we are not breathing, that ox means oxygen will not go to the blood. It will not reach to the each and every cell and we, we may die. If we'll stop eating, Again, we will not get energy. That energy will not be available to each and every cell to perform any duty and gradually we will die. If we will not throw out the waste material from our body, we will fall sick and we will have different type of problems or complications. So ex excretory system is equally important. But if the organism is not going for reproduction, asexual or sexual reproduction, then that individual is not going to die because this doesn't come under the vital life processes. Yet, this is very important. The answer as to why it is important lies in the next question. Which process is essential for the continuation of a species on this earth? So here comes the reproduction. So reproduction is essential for the continuation of a species on this earth. That is what you are going to explore in this video. So let's start with the first learning objective that is reproduction. Let's check it out. Reproduction in animals. Viewers, life continues from generation to generation because living things can produce young ones of their own kind. You can see a polar bear is giving birth to polar bear. Duck is laying eggs and from those ducklings are hatching. So life is continuing generation after generation. And which process is helping in this continuation? Reproduction. So what is reproduction? 
the process by which living beings produce young ones of their own kind is called reproduction. Why reproduction is important? For continuation of species generation after generation. Now there are a variety of living organisms, plants, animals, microbes and they have their own modes of reproduction. This chapter is devoted to reproduction in animals. So here you can see there are a variety of ways in which animals reproduce. Some animals reproduce by giving birth to babies like human beings, horses, cow. Some animals, they lay eggs from which young ones they hatch and the examples can be birds and snakes. There are some other type of lower level animals where the parent body has some changes in it and it is giving rise to the young one, the next generation. You are familiar with bacteria also. They are also continuing their life generation after generation as a species because of reproduction. So this was the glimpse of different ways of reproduction in case of living animals and same can be represented with the help of a flow chart. And for that, you have to watch objective number two, modes of reproduction. So let us check it out to types of reproduction. Basically, we have two modes of reproduction in case of living organisms. First one is sexual reproduction and the second one is asexual reproduction. Sexual reproduction, it requires two parents. There is involvement of sex organs, there is involvement of sex cells. Whereas in case of asexual reproduction, if you will pay attention to the term asexual, this means without sexual reproduction. So in this case, in asexual reproduction, only one parent is required and sex organs are not involved. Under asexual reproduction, there are basically two types about which we have to study in this chapter and they are binary fission and budding. Whereas in sexual reproduction, we have to learn about sexual reproduction in human beings, their reproductive parts, sex cells and the process in detail. So before proceeding with that, let's know about some very important terms related to sexual reproduction and they are covered in our learning objective 3. So let's check it out too together. There are certain terms children. Their knowledge is must if you want to understand this chapter and these terms are unisexual, bisexual, hermaphrodite, sex and gender. They are not taught by any of the YouTuber in their channel. But why I'm teaching? Because I want you to understand the chapter completely. So let's start with important terms related to sexual reproduction. Based on the presence of reproductive system, animals can be classified into two basic categories. Unisexual or bisexual. Now let's take up the meaning of this term unisexual. Unisexual, U and I. This means one. The organism in which male and female reproductive systems are present in different individuals are called unisexual organisms. Wo organisms in which male and female ke bich mein clear cut difference hai. मेल के अंदर सिर्फ मेल रिप्रोडक्टिव सिस्टम होता है फीमेल के अंदर फीमेल रिप्रोडक्टिव सिस्टम होता है उन ऑर्गेनिजम्स को हम बोलते हैं दे आर यूनिसेक्सुअल एंड एग्जांपल्स कैन बी ह्यूमन बीइंग्स वी आर यूनिसेक्सुअल वी आर आइदर फीमेल और मेल लाइकवाइज वी हैव अ लॉन्ग लिस्ट ऑफ यूनिसेक्सुअल एनिमल्स एंड अ फ्यू एग्जांपल्स आर विजिबल इन दिस स्लाइड नाउ लेट अस टेक अप दिस टर्म बाइसेक्सुअल what is the meaning of bisexual? Bisexual, the organism in which both the male and female reproductive systems are present in the same individual. They are called bisexual or hermaphrodite. Wo organism, just may male reproductive system or female reproductive system, ek hi individual mein present hai. To usme do sexes ek hi individual mein present hai. So, 
बाइसेक्शुअल इज दैट ऑर्गेनिज्म जिसमें मेल और फीमेल दोनों रिप्रोडक्टिव सिस्टम एक बॉडी में है यू आर सरप्राइज टू हेयर दिस इज इट इट अमेजिंग चिल्ड्रन यस देयर आर ऑर्गेनिजम्स लाइक स्नेल स्लग्स अर्थवर्म स्टार फिश लीच दे आर हर मेफ्रोडाइट और बाइसेक्शुअल मेल और फीमेल रिप्रोडक्टिव सिस्टम एक ही बॉडी में प्रेजेंट होते हैं so this is about bisexual now next important term related to sexual reproduction is sex sex refers to the physical and biological differences between men and women male hai to uska physical appearance bhi male ki tarah hoga aur uske internal organization reproductive system hormones sex chromosomes wo sab male ke honge whereas if it's a female so appearance wise she will be easily distinguishable from the males and internally also she will have female reproductive system female hormones and female sex chromosomes here we do have intersex uh, sex that is intersex they are neither completely male nor completely female because their reproductive systems are slightly different from man or a woman there is one more term gender and its knowledge is also equally important for my viewers who are studying this chapter in class 8 so gender refer to socially constructed characteristics of women and men socially constructed characteristics jo society construct karti hai ki aapko kaise rehna hai kaise behave karna hai kya kya responsibilities honi chahiye it is all directed by society you you are a man so you are supposed to be the breadwinner for the family women are supposed to be a good homemaker and look after the children so this is about few important terms which will be frequently repeated in this chapter till the end that's why i have incorporated these terms so that's it about important terms next is our objective number 4 sexual reproduction so let's explore about the basic characteristic features of sexual reproduction let's check it out together sexual reproduction in sexual reproduction two parents they are required one male called as father and one female called as mother so two parents are required now during sexual reproduction fusion of male and female gametes which are called as reproductive cells or sex cells it takes place so this fusion it leads to combining the genetic information of two individuals of different sexes male and female and this leads to the formation of a new individual or new organism of same species now this new organism it has characteristic of both the parents father and mother but genetically this individual is dissimilar to parents this new organism so produces it is called offspring progeny or young one another important feature of sexual reproduction is that it leads to variation and better survival of the species and sexual reproduction it leads to evolution too so these are the basic characteristic features of sexual reproduction so in your ncert book in introductory part there is a table table 9.1 in which name of the animals is written and you are supposed to fill up the name of young ones so if you have not filled up that table to fill it up but in addition to these seven animals and their young ones there is a long list of animals and their young ones about which you know and now it's time to summarize the content in this video you learnt about the meaning of the term reproduction together we came to know about various modes of reproduction we have also learnt about few important terms related to reproduction and the lastly our focus was about the basic characteristic features of sexual reproduction and now it's time for self assessment i'm sharing a worksheet based on the content of this video for your self assessment and i suggest you to go through these three questions sometime direct questions are asked sometime picture based questions are asked sometime open ended questions are asked 
So how you will attempt? Let me show you the example. For example, the first question in this worksheet is, what is the importance of reproduction for a species? So why is reproduction important for any species? Our answer should be, reproduction is important for the continuation of a species generation after generation. If some species will not reproduce, then sooner or later it will get extinct. Similarly, the second question is, name two modes of reproduction in animals. The question is direct and simple, so you have to write two modes of reproduction in animals are sexual reproduction and asexual reproduction. If some diagram based question is asked, like question number two is to complete the given flow chart, then you have to look A part, B part. So reproduction is basically divisible into two parts sexual reproduction and asexual reproduction. So at this part A, you have to write sexual reproduction and the B part of this incomplete flow chart is budding, which comes under asexual reproduction. So this is how you have to prepare the content of this chapter. In the next video of this chapter, I'm going to cover the content given in your NCRT book on page number 101 and it will be explained in the form of Part 2 of Chapter 9, Reproduction in Animals. And in that, I am going to cover sexual reproduction in humans. This is very important segment of this chapter and it has a high weightage in various competitive exams. So if you want to know about this, what is male reproductive system? What is female reproductive system? What are reproductive cells? All this will be covered in my second video. Please do join me there also. So with this, it's time to wind up this video. I want to sincerely thank all my subscribers for subscribing to my channel, for coming up with their suggestions in comment box and for supporting my bio. If you are a new viewer, I welcome you and I want you to stay connected. One appeal to my viewers that if you are liking the content of my Bioha videos, then please don't forget to give me a thumbs up. If you have not subscribed to my channel, then please do subscribe to it. Do share the link of my channel and my videos with your fellow friends. So with this, I am signing out. It's a bio bio from your facilitator. Stay tuned to my channel and keep watching Bioha. Bio bye. -bye.